Okay, so this is going to be part two of the iMac saga. The first video I did is uh, showing you, um, you know, the damage that we had done on it from shipping. Um, and so I was able to get a replacement cover for it, a little story to it. Before we get to that, we do have our 250 gigabyte crucial drive. I've already formatted it. I've already cloned the drive from the iMac to this, so it's an exact clone. Also, we're going to put a new PRAM battery in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to dismantle it. We're going to get all the dust out of it. We're going to repaste the CPU, the GPU, and the bridge on it. And we're going to give it a good cleaning and get it back together. And this thing should run a lot cooler. It took me about uh, three hours to uh, do a clone on this disc. I mean, it's, you know, USB 2, it's pretty slow. But we got it done. But anyway, getting back to the cover. Uh, this is actually from a 2006 iMac. And the G5 iSight that wasn't around very long then Apple migrated to the Intel processors and they use the same case however the bottom differs on it and I'm gonna to try to show you here now I do apologize for the camera angle this was all gonna be all overhead but my video mirroring cable that I use uh, keeps coming up with a QR code I did all the updates on it and it still does that. So obviously I'm not getting the right update for it. So I cannot use my monitor. And I really wanted to, because I had an overhead mount all fixed up for this so we could do this. I'm gonna do this the best I can here. So this is off the 2006 cover, this one here that, we're, that we've worked on. And you see the, what the big difference is, is the RAM door on the bottom. Now this here is basically just sticky taped on the inside of this case here and I'm going to show you here I'm just trying to be real careful here so this is all this is all metal and this is all double-sided taped down to the plastic cover so it was a very painful project to get this off of the cover without damaging it which I took a heat gun on low setting softened up the glue. I took like a credit card at the beginning and then once I got it started done I had a really big uh, special uh, drywall putty knife and just very painfully as I heated it not to damage the plastic it relaxed the glue and I was able to take it off the 2006 cover and then I was able to take the original one that I got that was broken this is the one that was busted up here this is the one off of the uh, iMac uh, G5 here I'll hold this out here like I said it's and see I, that's what it looks like with that uh, metal bracket out of it so now you'll see the difference in the door here you see right here that's all different same bracket basically it's just laid out a little differently uh, the whole arrangement is a, a little different in a couple spots but we can work with that that's not a problem that's not going to affect the operation of it but you can see the difference here it's the exact same cover just this here is is different okay and you look at this one here and you see it's different they have those big loops that you grab a hold of and it pulls out the ram sticks so yeah, so we've almost got this all polished up. Um, we first, because this replacement cover did have a lot of scratches on it, that uh, was not acceptable to me because I wanted it to look nice. Because like I said, the one that I got for this, the iMac G5 cover, it was in beautiful shape other than the fact it was all busted up. So what, we, what you do, this is actually, uh, as a note, this is actually a acrylic case and the interesting thing is is the inside of this they have a laminated plastic on it it's not paint it's not tape it's a very very thin coating of plastic on it 
probably not even a millimeter. I mean, it's even thinner than that. And the and how I know that is, I had a broken piece of that cover, and I was trying to scrape it. You can't scratch it, so it tells me it's a form of plastic. But anyway, so we did the 120 grit wet sand paper. I used a orbital sander on it, and spent an hour on it doing that. Then I went to 320. Same thing, starting to bring up the, uh, get rid of all those heavy duty scratches and now starting slowly putting the polish back on it. So now I'm ready to do the 600 on it and that's what's gonna start bringing up the, uh, the actual shine on it. And then after I do that and I feel satisfied with that, uh, then I'll hit it with the 1500. And then after that, then I'm gonna use a buffing wheel and I can use either, believe it or not, cheap toothpaste works really good or I can use the McGuire's or Plastic X. Um, uh, there's lots of different things you can use to polish that acrylic up. A very mild automotive rubbing compound works really good too. Just depends. And the reason why I know this is acrylic is because of the way that's broken. Acrylic has an uh, interesting way of fracturing when it gets broken. Uh, it, just, it is a little flexible, but it has its limitations. And polishing it, you got to be careful because you don't want to put too much force on. That's why I got it on the towel here. It doesn't want to walk on the hard wood here. Plus, it also protects the plastic from getting any further scratches on it. So this is really baby, baby smooth now. It looks feels really good. So the only thing I have to do is hit up the 600, the 1500, and then the uh, cloth buffing wheel. We'll do that, and it should look nice and translucent again without all those terrible scratches. And also guys, I'm gonna do a very, very special upgrade, which I will save that to the very end. Okay, so we got the iMac down here. And uh, one thing I, I uh, noticed is this metal right here. I'm gonna try to zoom in here. Uh, it's a little humped up and that's from the uh, impact when this thing was shipped upside down. So I'm gonna, another issue I'll have is I'll have to kind of get this to, to uh, that little ridge out of it. Otherwise the cover's not gonna lay down there properly. So um, when I get that monitor out, I'll have to see if there's a way just to take this metal bracket off of it. And then it'll be easy. I No way I could do it with that in there because I'd run the risk of cracking that glass in there. And then we're, then we're in big trouble. We don't wanna do that. The other thing that I noticed too, and I'm sorry for the loose camera work, is I noticed uh, this thing has obviously been opened before because somebody glued, it's, it's hot glue, this uh, USB connector. And I don't want to take that apart because uh, maybe that connector, maybe there was something wrong with that plug and they put that on there to, to stabilize it. Um, so I'm going to have to just kind of let that dangle around there and maybe unhook it inside the machine when we take that motherboard out. But I don't want to really mess with that and run the risk of damaging that. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get the uh, monitor out of here. And uh, that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so we got the screen out of it. And let me tell you, that was no fun with all this uh, foil stuck to it from the top and the bottom. But anyway, so the monitor's loose. I've got the inverter cables unplugged. I just have to unplug the LV cable on it. But that thing, it's pretty dirty in there. It's very, very, very dusty. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit here so you can see. Fans got a lot of dirt on it. And uh, power supply's got a lot of dust on it. So, and the, and the heat sink's got a lot of dust on it too there. So we definitely have to give it a good cleaning here. So let me um, get this thing uh, tore apart a little bit more and then we'll be back. You can also see the damage on this LCD. Now right here, this was the corner that was on the outer case was broken on it. And that's probably an impact from that and that kind of distorted that metal a little bit. and. Right here where my thumb is there, you can see right there. So hopefully I can take this, this this front cover off and straighten it out before I put it all back together. But the, the really the, the only thing that saved the screen 
is this huge metal bracket that actually holds it into the computer. If it had not had that, uh, this screen would not have survived the uh, that shipping damage. So we got really, really lucky with that. So I'll be back in a moment. All right, so we got the uh, LV connector off of it there. And that was, was connected right there. And we took two screws out and that connector unplugs. So you can see we have the uh, Western Digital Drive there. Sorry for the terrible camera work. So there's the power supply right there. And then of course then we have the inverter board over there. And then we have our very dirty heat sinks. There's a lot of dust in here. There's the optical drive and these are the speakers down here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start disassembling this. I'm going to obviously pull the drive out because we're going to put the uh, nice small SSD in there and that'll give us a lot better airflow in there too. That'll be the benefit of that also with that fan in there. And that'll help keep that power supply a lot cooler too because it's really it's kind of blocked uh, keeping that power supply cool. So yeah, so we're going to start tearing it apart. And uh, there's the, the bridge there. We're going to repaste that too. So we're going to get her all apart, get her all cleaned up, and get this motherboard out. Well, we're slowly getting it taken apart. Uh, we got the speakers out of it. We got all the cables unhooked from the motherboard. And so we're just about ready to take the screws out that's holding the motherboard. And then we should be able to pull that uh, motherboard out. And then we'll be able to uh, repaste all the processors and do a good cleaning in there and reassemble it. Okay, so we got the logic board out of it. And let me tell you, it is no fun getting this thing out. My gosh, there's so many wires and just zero clearance. But I got the whole assembly out. It all comes out as a big assembly. And I've been looking at all the caps. The caps look, uh, they look good. I don't see any issues with them. They all look brand new. Looks like there's some polymer caps on there too. Um, but you can see there's the heat sink for the, um, it's either the CPU or the GPU, I'm not sure. I'm gonna say that this one's probably for the CPU because there's more heat piping on this one. So that's probably the, that's probably the GPU there. That's just my assumption. On the back of this thing, there is a header right there. Now Mike at Mike's Mac Shack, uh, he's my friend on YouTube there, and he has the prototype of this iSight G5 20 inch. His actually has an SD card reader on there. I'll put a link to his channel and you can uh, check it out. It's pretty neat. Uh, his uh, has a prototype and even on the back of the monitor it says uh, uh, engineering sample. So yeah, so uh, but he told me that there will be a header on it, and there it is right there. His actually has a different type of firmware uh, than than this model here because of that prototype. So anyway, yeah, so we're going to um, take these uh, heat sink off. We're going to give it a good cleaning. We're going to repaste it and reassemble it, and then we will go back and continue cleaning the inside of the case here. We're going to clean those fans out real good. Uh, they're loaded up with dust and I'll pull that power supply loose because I want to check that out and also blast that out with some air too. And we'll take the paintbrush and kind of dust everything off in there and then we'll be ready to reassemble this thing. And it's not going to be any fun putting this thing back in there because it was a bejeeber to get out of there. So when we get this all repasted, we'll start assembling it, get the new hard drive in it. Of course, we're gonna put our new PRAM battery in it there. That's the one that's still in it. Seems to be still working actually, because when you power it up, it knows what the time is. See what we can do with that monitor as far as fixing that little boo-boo on the, on the screen there, the bracket around the screen. You know, just kind of getting a shot down. There is a lot of dust in there camera doesn't do it justice but anyway all right guys we will be back in a minute okay so we got the heat sink all disassembled 
and you can see that uh, this thermal paste let's see right there okay that one there that's like concrete that one there it's like concrete too it's as hard as a rock and then on here you can hardly see, uh, there's there's some on here but again it's all uh, it's all all hard there right there it's all hard and what little bits on there is all hard too well let's see it comes off on my finger it's all like powder so what we're going to do is we're going to repaste this and I actually got these vents blowed out pretty good so they look pretty good already and then uh, we'll repaste this and get it all back together so we almost got everything cleaned up here uh, we got the CPU and the GPU cleaned and we got the heat sinks all nice and cleaned up here again sorry for my terrible camera work there now what we're doing now is we're doing that for this uh, bridge here and that's a pretty big processor there and so anyway we got to clean this up here and then we'll get that stuck back down in there and then we're going to repaste everything and then we'll start getting this heat sink put back together and so we got this uh, CPU bridge all cleaned up here and uh, Mike uh, Mike's Mac Shack. Yeah, this is the Kodiak IBM Just exactly like what you said it had in it So anyway, we're gonna get this all buttoned up and we'll be back in a moment Okay, so we got this thing all cleaned out. We took all the components out Cleaned it all up inside there. It's all nice and clean pulled all the fans out blew them out They were just loaded up with dust logic board has all been repasted cleaned and ready to be put back in. So what we're going to do is we're going to start reassembling this. Okay, so now I'm working on the LCD screen, and I did get this. Uh, it just clips on there, this metal bezel. So you have to take all the side brackets off, and it just clips right on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten this out there, that part right there. So that way, when it's all back together, that front bezel will fit nice and flush in there. So I'm going to work on that, and I'll show you what it looks like uh, when we're done. Okay, so we got it uh, straightened out. Straightens up pretty easy there. So now, when we put it all together, when we put that front uh, acrylic bezel on it, it's going to look pretty good. So I got it all straightened out there, and and like I said, it, I even got that little part there uh, that where it had the initial impact. I hammered on that a little bit too. That fits pretty flat on there too. So, all right, we're going to put this monitor back together. Well, we have been trying to get this computer to boot. Uh, it does not like the SSD drive, which I have in all my other Macs, even the G4 Cube. And well, this has been quite an adventure with this iMac G5. But we got it all back together. And uh, it runs beautifully. It runs nice and cool. We repasted the CPU. We repasted the GPU. And then this bridge here. Now this does get quite warm, but that's just the nature of the beast there. Um, and you're probably noticing what that thing is there. This little light here. Well, that is the special mod that we're going to be doing. So we're going to add this to the... Uh, back of the Apple logo. We're going to light that up and it would look really nice. Um, about really the only thing we have to do is I just need to finalize the wiring right here. This is actually the coming off the power supply going into the computer and this black lead goes to the black wire. That's common. And then this red wire is actually going to the uh, blue wire. Uh, I did have it on the purple wire. The purple wire is 5 volts, but it's on all the time. So the blue wire is, is switched on during power up. That's what we wanted. So that way when we turn the computer off, that light will go off. And what we're going to do, so this foil part gets put back on here. This hole here is for the infrared port. So, there'll be just enough room to actually have this coming through there. So it's going to be like this. So it'll be there, and that light's going to be up in there. There's just enough room for that to fit beside that little infrared port there. And then, when we get that all buttoned up, 
Then all there is left to do is polish up the front of the case and we'll put the high gloss polish back on it. Right now it's a nice frosty look but we'll do the high gloss polish on it and it'll look like an ice cube again. It'll be nice and clear again. So, uh, And then when that light shines through it, it's actually going to kind of radiate to that acrylic on the front here too. So to make nice, ought to make like a nice uh, effect for it there. So yeah, so we're going to get that going here in just a minute. Now what I had to do, as you know, when before I tore this thing apart, I cloned the hard drive from this thing onto a crucial 250 gigabyte drive. And I've used crucial drives in all my uh, G4s, G3, Macs, no problem. But this did not like it. I tried formatting it three or four times, three or four different ways. I even took and cloned the drive off my cube and put in there. And the issue was, is this thing would, this thing would never see it. it would never see the drive. You could put the uh, install disk in here, go to disk utility and have it search it and it never showed up. So what I did is I took the hard drive out of my Franken Mac. It's a 250 gigabyte Samsung drive. And I just put it in there. Same thing. I put the Tiger install disk in there and uh, lo and behold, it found it. So I reformatted it. I installed Tiger, did all the updates on it. Then I took and I put Leopard on it and upgraded it to Leopard and all the, with all the updates and everything on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lot of those apps off of that other hard drive that was in here originally, that spinner drive, because there's a lot of cool stuff on there. And I just could have just recloned that drive to that Samsung drive, but I got to thinking about it. I go, you know, let's just do a total clean install, and that way we can modify it however we want to do it. So that's what I did. And this, like I said, though, this thing runs really cool. You, you, you can't even hear it run now. Before that thing, the fans would ramp up. Um, as you know, as you saw previously, there was a lot of dust in here. The fans were coated with dust. Uh, we repasted everything. All the thermal paste was all petrified on it. All it was all it was, it was totally hard. It wasn't. It wasn't even, nothing soft about it anymore. So yeah, then I even pulled the uh, RAM out of it because that even had a bunch of junk on it. But, I mean, this thing is clean as a whistle on the inside, between the compressed air, going over with a, a soft sable brush to get all this stuff off of it. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. And I just pretty much disassembled the whole thing so I could get in there and clean it. We pulled the optical drive out. Of course, the motherboard, the speakers, everything you needed to get to. Then I was able to fix. So this, from when uh got shipped got damaged this metal bezel and as i showed you in the video i took it apart and i took this and laid it face down on a concrete and took the hammer and just slightly tapped it and flattened it back out and reassembled it back on the screen so now when we put the plastic front cover on it, it should lay nice and flush on there and got some of the dings out of the top of it there but it was just it was just all cosmetic this is a real thin piece of steel clips on the outside of the actual LCD display there. Like I said, we got eyesight camera there. So when we get ready to put the front case on it, we'll put the eyesight camera back on there. We'll reattach it. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, tidy up the electrical on this here. And it's just uh, temporarily kind of stuck in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little nicer connector to go on there and then we'll uh, Put maybe like a little silicone over that just to protect it or, or a little shrink wrap to, to, to dress that up. Then when I get that done, then I'm going to put that front panel back on it. Okay, so we got it all buttoned up here. We got this uh, metal shielding back down here. It's basically uh, what this is. If you've ever guys have ever watch people put duct work in for your AC or or uh, heating system HVAC systems this is basically what they're using okay this is um, cold weather this is furnace tape goes right on the metal duct work this will 
withstand a lot of cold or a lot of heat. So what I did, this is basically the same stuff that this is. What we do is we cut it in little strips and we have our wires taped here and we got that lead taped and positioned. It ain't gonna go nowhere with this stuff. This stuff is extremely tacky, all right? So anyway, that's our Apple light and it came out pretty doggone good. So when we slide this cover on, then this will uh, snap down on top of it there. Okay, so we are in the process of putting the final polish on this and you can see it's starting to pick up a little bit of shine there. It's starting to get a little bit more uh, translucent up here. That's what takes the longest, getting this clear like it was originally. So anyway, we're gonna end the video here and we're gonna have a part three because next time you'll see this, the cover will be on it and you'll see that nice little modification on it when it starts up. So, please like this video, please subscribe and click that notification bell. We're also on MeWe and Twitter. You can always reach out to me on Twitter. So you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.